Today's episode is brought to you by The Gallery. Based out of New York, The Gallery is a curated collection of photographs from around the world. While we are all unable to travel, this is a great way to bring a piece of the world to you. All prints are made from 100% recycled aluminum, giving your wall that gallery finish. Right now, The Gallery is offering our listeners 15% off their purchase by using the code 15OFF. That's 15OFF. Go to thegallery.com, that's T-H-E-G-A-L-R-Y.com, so your wall will never be boring again. Cue the singing giraffes! Hello and welcome to Flipper Flicks. I'm Tim, and uh, this is where we'll watch a movie if it exists. Uh, it's nothing to do with the movie we just watched, and I'm going to keep talking until <laughs> someone stops me. <laughs> I'm Adam. I'm Sam. And we're happy to have you here. You guys can catch us on our social medias. We are at Flipper Flicks on Instagram and Twitter if you want to catch us mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. We're also on podcasting platforms where you can find them. Anchor, Apple, Spotify, etc. They're all fantastic apps. We're even on some of the different ones like Castbox mm-hmm. and Good Pods and whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now Sam, I'm gonna pass it off to you. She looks ready. Well, I just want to say that we're a five star podcast, so we really want you to rate us on Apple Podcast. Oh, five star man. Rate me. Five star. Rate me. We're gold. <laughs> there's your there's your connection. We're gold. Yeah. There. You there go. you go. Okay, so this week we watched, uh, what did we watch? The Goldfinch. We, fuck, what did we do to get this movie? We got a straight Box to off video. Bust. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> Box right. off his bus. Box off his bus. I even had, like, a such great intro-ish such thing great for intro. this. I can't think tonight. So, we rolled Box off his bus. And it's our last Box off his bus for a while, so I really wanted to send it off with, like, a big bust. She so did how not much choose did this John bust Carter. buy? Uh, this one busted. The budget was forty-four to forty-nine million. I don't understand why there's a hyphen, but yeah, there is. And the box office was nine million. So, <laughs> so this is a big old bust. Okay, so that would be the Goldfinch, and we watched it on Amazon Prime. Yes, we did. Because we've been forgetting to tell you where we watch these <laughs> movies. So, if you have been like, "Where the fuck do I watch it?" Head over to Instagram or Twitter. We tell you where to watch it, so that that way you're covered. Now, to the Goldfinch synopsis. Gosh, I'm a mess today. A boy in New York is taken in by a wealthy Upper East Side family. (laughs) Do you need a tag? (laughs) No, 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 no. Uh, Let me restart. A boy in New York is taken in by a wealthy Upper East Side family after his mother is killed in a bombing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So, the ratings for this one. Critics on Rotten Tomatoes gave it... 24%. 24%. Don't rush me. <laughs> and the audience gave it a 72%. Okay, we'll get to that. The IMDBers of the world gave it a 6.3 out of 10. That seems interesting. And Google gave it an 86%. It failed. It yeah. definitely did. So... Expectations. So I picked this one, as I said, because it was like a big old bust. And I remember seeing trailers for it. When did this come out? What, last year? 2019, yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing trailers for it and being like, ooh, it's like a time warp situation. But then it also looks depressing. So like a, a tragedy time time movie. I could get down with that. What about you, Adam? Oh, I thought it was a, kid, a movie about a kid and a book. For some weird reason, I thought it was about books. I don't know that there's ever a book in there, but I'll I mean, believe it. I mean, there is. I mean, there's, in the trailer. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why I thought it was about books. And I was like, that sounds boring. <laughs> okay. So I didn't want to see it. <laughs> That's originally. fair. Yeah. <laughs> Tim? I had no idea. Uh, I just knew it Had was you a- heard of it? No. Mm-mm. Okay. I just knew it was a box office bust. I saw it and I was like, there's a lady and a kid and on the cover. Uh, sure, fire away. <laughs> like, no Typical idea. Tim fashion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim goes in blind and he's he loves it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It works it works that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had been a bit since we watched the trailer and I don't know, again, I thought of the books. I mean the kid likes his books. 
He did say that True. Tolkien is his favorite author. True. So respect. Spoilers. Well, but he yes, throws he that did. out there. Throws Tolkien out there, and then he's like Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. Yeah. All right, dude. All right. I love Poe, man. <laughs> yeah, but come and on. The kid's like 10. You like Tolkien. Yeah. Oh, that's true. And then you're like, Poe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I Actually, I'm going to be more surprised Tol- with Tolkien at 13. Honestly, yeah, I was too, but. Because Tolkien's like Silmarillion. If you try and read that as a kid, you're going to be lost. Like, a little tough, yeah. but Sam's brother, who is an avid reader, even said that that's not the easiest one to read. Yeah. Well, and then this kid, I have the same note written down. Like, who does this kid think he is? He also says he likes Beethoven. Like, that's his favorite music. Like, get the fuck out of yeah, here, kid. Yeah, that was What sort of rich-ass preppy school did he <laughs> go to? Where they all listen to Beethoven, and they're all about... Like, he knew, like, rem- like all of these artists yeah. throughout the ages at the age of 13. Yep. Yeah, like, sit down, kid. I was reading Captain Underpants at 13. <laughs> okay? Like... That was my big excitement. And then Harry Potter. But, like, Harry Potter's more mainstream. Captain mm-hmm. Underpants, I'm pretty sure, had pictures in it. Yeah, it all did. It did. But yeah. I, <laughs> I had tried trying to those think. Pictures. 13 was, like, 7th and 8th grade, man. Yeah. I thought he said he was, like, 9. He was 13. I have no idea. Why did he say he was 9? Dude, and... you could tell that half of them were in puberty because the little, like, his, like, friend that he lived with was way shorter than him. And then there's that Tommy kid. Yeah. That was way taller, so it was, like, clearly puberty age. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure later on in the movie he goes, like, yeah, I was, like, seven, eight, or nine, or whatever. When he's talking about, he's talking to somebody, and he's talking about this rough time. Okay, let's just jump into it, as we already have. That this kid has a rough time, like, not only does his mom die, but then he gets taken in by these weird, this weird family. Like, at the beginning of the movie, I couldn't quite tell if the mom, like, gave a shit about him or not. Because she was, like acting like she's kind of making a big stink about it like that he ended up there because of his dad and stuff like not taking him in and then like she invites him to maine so you're like oh well maybe she does like him right like but i don't know i was definitely like (laughs) on the fence of whether or not she liked him until like three-fourths of the way through the movie i just want to say like most of the movie was like i don't even it's like not explaining what needed to be explained as is tradition Really? Yeah, like we didn't even see a full flashback of the Metropolitan Art Museum oh. until like freaking until it was high jumping into the pool. Yeah, that was like really far into the movie. It was about fifty percent. Like we had yeah. to watch him get high at least a hundred times before yep. then, mm-hmm. when the kid's like eight years old, yeah, or thirteen. <laughs> thirteen. <laughs> now, do you think the kid took more drugs or ate more, just based on the time you watched in the movie, like? We saw him do drugs about like thirty times, but yeah, I mean they made more of a point for him to be a connoisseur of drugs instead of food, but yeah, yeah. But ever since he was thirteen, people adults were just shoving pills down his throat, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know. I tried to reconcile this movie and be like, man, this kid was dealt a bad hand, like you know he's had a rough time, and then yeah, you have like two different scenarios where adults are just like giving him pills, so like. I kind of get it, but then when we're, I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the movie and we're watching him still get high when he's like an adult, uh, like doing the same shit that he was doing when he was eight. I'm like, I'm over watching you like just do drugs because yeah. you're depressed. Like yeah. fucking find a new hobby, kid. <laughs> <laughs> a new hobby. <laughs> yeah. hey Okay, oh, Hobie was the MVP of yeah, this movie. Hobie was awesome. All right. Like- <laughs> okay. I really liked Boris. No. But we'll get to that. Well, I like the Boris. I like the acting of Boris, like the ridiculousness that he was. Okay. There's parts of Boris I liked, yeah. Yeah, like I wouldn't. Boris is a terrible person. If that's but what he's you're a saying. loyal friend. Very. Yeah. But I was just talking about how Hobie's the MVP. Oh, yeah. Because he, yes. he took him yeah, in absolutely. two different times, right? And like, the dog. Really... Like, come on. Yeah. When he's <laughs> like, you hilarious. both can stay. I loved it. Yeah. Like, you showed up with a. Halfway across country with a dog all of a sudden and like no questions asked. Hobie's just like, yeah, here's this nice room. It was what's his face is Blackwell's. Welty. Yeah. And I don't know. I think it was Welty Blackwell was his full name. Yeah. And then even when Theo's kind of like being a butt as an adult, Hobie, you can tell he's like disappointed, but he's still not really like, he doesn't kick him out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like he doesn't really do anything that like 
would be detrimental to Theo. And so, like, I don't know. I feel like he got lucky with Hobie. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Extreme, especially since it was just, like, happenstance that he ended up there because of the whole accident. Getting the ring from Hobie's partner and, yeah. uh, it, you know. It just felt like that happened a lot in the movie. I'm going to keep saying it. You know what? That's a good tagline for the movie. It happened. Uh, because <laughs> it literally just felt like he kept happening upon things. Or like something would happen to him. And like yep. it would benefit him in some way. So I don't know. That's how I felt about it. But Yeah. I think that's... I agree. I agree with that sentiment. Now we can flip to Boris. Dude. So originally they were, they were looking to hire... They were looking to hire somebody who's actually Russian. Okay. Instead of a little Finn Wolfhard or uh, whatever yeah. his last name. From Stranger Things, yeah. From Stranger Things, yeah. He, but apparently the Russian dialect coach, mm-hmm. like, he worked with her, like, months beforehand cause, and gave a perfect Russian accent Oh. in his audition, so they used him instead. Ooh, well, there you go. Look at him go. Weird. Because yeah. we definitely were sitting here watching, like, he feels like somebody... Like anyone is just trying to do the Russian accent. The Russian you know? accent. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't like sound. And later on, the other actor that plays his grown up version felt more natural or whatever. But like the younger one was I like. I think he actually is Eastern Europe. It probably. Because <laughs> I don't know. We were like, he just sounds like somebody trying to force it. Yeah. I thought so too. Like, So that's kind of interesting to learn. Yeah. But maybe the actual like actor, like the other Russian actors. It seemed like, like the kids he was weren't good. the other one, but. Yeah, I was going to say, like, maybe he was just that much better than everybody else that was shit at it. Right, yeah. <laughs> Could be, yeah. And man, like, I got to say, like, did they pick the older Boris first, you think? And then they're like, okay, we got to dye his hair black and curl it. Yeah, I don't know. Just because he looks a little different, clearly. Yeah. Also, he's so much taller than he was in Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. Puberty hit that kid fast. <laughs> Yeah, he was, like, when they were laying next to the pool, he was, like, so, like, a foot. Lanky. Like, yeah, he looked really good. Yeah. But I was just going to say, like, my first kind of initial thoughts about Boris were that, like, he's kind of a bad influence, right? And, like, he's overall just kind of, like, that crazy friend that just, like, causes trouble. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, I don't know that he's really around to stick around for Theo. Like, he might just be, like... It just might be convenient for him, you know? Right. And so I was kind of skeptical of Boris when he first came in. But then when Theo has his nightmare and Boris is, like, in bed with him and he cuddles him, I was like, oh, yeah. good guy, Boris. So that was my first, like, happiness towards Boris. But then, you know, as an adult, right, like, you find out that he took the painting of him as a kid, which yeah. at the time you could argue, like, he's just a stupid kid, right? And so... There's that, but I was kind of pissed when I figured that out. I was like, dang it, Boris! Right. Like, caused him trouble again, just like I initially thought. And so I was <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> mad at Boris. But then, in Amsterdam, he saves his life! Right. And I was like, yeah. yeah, my dude! So I just like, I didn't know how to feel about Boris most of the time. It was just years, back and forth. Know? It was a roller coaster with yeah. Boris. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know what to trust him. I mean, like, his dad killed somebody in a di- in a mine or something something like yeah. that I- i'm sure his dad killed more than one person from what i can oh definitely tell. yeah he's an evil russian guy yeah i don't know i mean boris yeah I, like i said boris was just like that loyal friend i don't know it was kind of weird like after all these years they run into each other again you know just happened to when he travels a lot and whatnot but he's and he talks about the painting which i also figured at one point he didn't have it anymore. It just seemed weird because he was never looking yeah. at it or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. And it's, this isn't based on some actual thing that happened, right? Like this place didn't actually no. get blown up. Okay. I was like, I feel like I would have heard of this, but yeah, the author of the book saw the gold finch. The gold finch is all real. Okay. It's from like 1694 and everything. The explosion right. story is real about no, it. No, I don't know about that, but the picture is real. Okay. Yeah. And it's in the, I'm going to butcher it. It's in the city literally called the Haga in Netherlands. Mm. Oh. And the author saw it and was like, I'm going to write a book about that picture. Oh, okay. That's cool. So kind of interesting. She brought it back to the Netherlands. Yeah. But I'm sure she probably chose Amsterdam just because it has a bit more weight behind its name. Yeah, probably. True. Yeah. Just, yeah. Kind of an interesting idea, though, that 
the, it's in like in the Netherlands because of the story in a sense. Right. Like in the end, because that's where it gets put. At yeah. least it seemed. We saved all these artwork. <laughs> See Theo, we good guys. <laughs> I I will say I did like that, like how he's like, oh well, maybe it was supposed to work out that way. Like it was just that was another like lovable Boris moment. Yeah. You're like, ah, Boris, like. Always positive, good little Boris. I don't know. I think it's cool that they saved all the artwork through that. Right. But the way that we got there, oh, it was a mess. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like Boris is just kind of like character. He kind of got stuck in the lifestyle due to his family yeah. and everything. Yeah. And so you can kind of see, like, he's a good dude, but he just got kind of caught up in all this bull crap and whatnot. And he's but... good at being bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to go back to Mrs. Barber. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Barber, like Sam said at the beginning of the movie, was like, I can't tell if she wants him out of there or she's happy to have him with them. Because when she was older, I definitely was like, this lady's going to fuck this kid. This adult <laughs> kid. Oh, uh, yeah. I kind of, yeah. Got those She vibes. had some, <laughs> some, I don't know, some hungry eyes on. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes and gets engaged to her daughter i'm like interesting somewhat yeah that was just really weird because as she mentioned like she was like not great to him as a kid right like the only one that was good to him in that family for sure was the littlest one what was his name i don't know uh okay well the little one that was funny uh i wanted to say andy but i cannot remember i'm pretty sure it's andy yeah yeah Andy was the best. Mm. Andy was really cool. Because <laughs> you know? he told it like it was. And also, he was, like, the only one, like we said when he first came in, like, that actually was kind of, like, happy to see him or at least treated him yeah. normal. Like, yeah. the mom was kind of tiptoeing around him. The other two kids were, were literal jerks. assholes. Yeah. Although, I guess the dad was pretty nice to him, too. Or at least he tried, right? Like, he gave off more but caring vibes. such a dick, though, at the same time. <laughs> I think he was just like, he was a dick in a different way. Like, he was like, look at my dick and look how rich we are. Oh. Sort of thing. Uh, yeah. We're going sailing in Maine. Honestly. I love the ocean. I think that had to do with, because later on you learn he was bipolar. Yeah. Yes. So I think he probably had some other, you know, stuff going on and that kind of, I, I don't know, probably affected his every, because cause he, yeah, because he was kind of awkward at times. Like they, like the kid would say something to him and he would just. Rip. he would just wouldn't even say anything because he didn't know how to answer and like he would just yeah. go yeah. talking about stuff because he didn't know how to like control like what to do in the situation or whatever but maybe the grandpa so the dad's dad mm -hmm. brought him out to sea because he said that that salt water is secure for everything yeah maybe like he was saying like oh it helps me with my bipolar yes probably maybe yeah, yeah. but then not so much like he doesn't survive in the ocean, sadly. But yeah. I thought that was a good quote. You know, I wondered about that, though. I even said it at the time. Do you think Platt, that's his name, right? Yes, Platt. Do you think Platt kind of caused an accident to to off his dad, but then Andy got sucked up in, into the middle of it, too? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like <laughs> that seemed... feel like that's what happened. Because he was upset about Andy. He didn't give a crap about his dad, but like... It almost seemed like he was going to go on a trip with his dad, and his dad made Andy go, and it Andy became collateral, and he couldn't save him. Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt about it. It just seems super strange. Well, that seems so normal, too, at the end, just depressed. Yeah. Yeah, which is odd, because, like, I, I don't know. We he saw one scene with him. Yeah, he was a teenager at the time, so, like, they're angsty, but he just seemed, like, super angry. Oh, yeah. About, Who do I have to blow to get a coffee around here? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, dude, chill out. Also, your life is not that hard. Your house is I, I don't. Yeah, dude, I don't know what his problem Did was. Did you guys really. see those vases? No, I don't think. There was a lot to look at in that so, home. That was really nice. They had so these two you? foot tall vases. Okay. I'm only calling it a vase because of the sunny episode. Yeah. Okay. Where they the got a, um, they're yeah. trying to, <laughs> they want to get the artifact back, and I couldn't <laughs> just. That's all I could picture. Oh my god. But gosh. these these vases were massive. But yeah, and then they had all the artwork that looked like rich people artwork. And the antiques. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then he goes into the father's office, I think. Yeah. I think so. And he's like rummaging through everything and he pulls out a yellow like the yellow pages and I'm like, 
Oh, I definitely thought he was pulling out a gun. Uh-huh. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you find out that Tommy basically fucked over his life. Yeah, that's true. Literally, like, if Tommy didn't... If he didn't get blamed for Tommy's cigarettes, his mom doesn't die, he doesn't end up in Vegas, doesn't meet Boris, and he lives a normal life. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of what Tim was talking about. Well, maybe you can verify, mm-hmm. Tim. But, like, a lot of stuff just sort of, like, happens. Yeah. I feel like this plot was very, like... Linear. Yeah. X plus X plus X equals X. Yeah. And I was just like, can't we... <laughs> I don't know. It it almost seemed like it was, like, dumbed down or just, like, lazy writing. Because <laughs> I was like, I just don't... I don't know. Maybe it does kind of, like, spiral out of control. But... Mm. It just seemed very heavy-handed with the spiraling out of control, in my opinion. (laughs) So I was, in the beginning, like, pretty hooked. Like, I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be one of these. Like, I'm going to have to be thinking the whole time. I'm going to have to figure it out before the movie ends kind of thing, like, before it tells me. Nope. Yeah. Nope. They kind of spell every single (laughs) thing out for It lost me about halfway through, and I was like, I don't, I just don't know. I'm not hooked anymore. Something's not right here. And I was like, okay. Well, I guess I'm just along for the ride now. <laughs> just because <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, it's not. I don't know. I thought it was going to be a thinking movie, but it, it was just kind of like telling a story. And I don't really know what the story is besides he misses his mom. Yeah. I... Yeah. No, you definitely get that vibe from the trailer, too, that it's going to be like more complicated or more like, I don't know, more exciting mm. <laughs> for lack of a better word than it was like. I feel like we had to wait off so long just to figure out what happened, like yeah. the full flashback, and then like the rest of it was just filler, is yeah. how I felt. But I was at one point I honestly thought the mom might have done the bomb. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like she just runs off. I want to go look at this picture. Explosions. Yeah. And I'm like, did she do it? Like they're leaving that pretty open ended. They're not saying yeah. like it was terrorists. They're not saying it was the trees just blowing wind. <laughs> I wasn't sure what happened at first. And I was like, maybe she did it. Then I was like, maybe maybe Welty did it. Yeah. Like, I thought Welty might have been like, oh, I'm going to try and steal this piece of art. Which, I actually went back and rewatched the scene where Welty tells him, like, whatever. He talks to him. Remember how when he gives the ring? He's like, not here. Don't leave it here. Not here. Take it. Take it. They mustn't see it. They'll take it. They took all the light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, a couple things. Like, oh, like, is that it? Is this what you want? Take it with you. Says something in French. They, like, mumbles some French phrase. Yeah. Because I, I had to turn on the captions for this because I was like, what the hell is he saying? I had captions on, and it didn't say anything for me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it just said French. Yeah. It said speaking French. Yeah. And I'm like, uh? And he's like, promise, promise you'll take it. And I'm like. I was trying to figure out, like, how did Theo get to the point where he's like, I'm not giving it up. Because my logic would have been, hey, if he's taking it, he's supposed to be giving it to Hobie. Oh, yeah. Like, take it with you. And then here's his ring. Go find us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my brain, my logic. And then he's like, mine. And he's like, it's mine. Well, I think he did that because it, like, reminds him of his mom, right? I think he ended up keeping it and not giving it to Hobie because of that. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, I am a little bit concerned because, like, obviously, Hobie, when f- he finds out that, like, he took it, he's basically like, you're not supposed to have it. Like, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be immortal. It's supposed to be where everybody can see it. So it's interesting that Blackwell's, like, they can't have it. Right. That's, he, like, was very delu- he was going crazy because he just got blown up. No, I know. But I just I, think that just that's crazy. funny that it's that opposite. Yeah. Like, even if he that's is true. going crazy. Do you think Welty was kind of a... Uh, scammer like Theo was? No. Maybe. I don't... Th- well... <laughs> Just straight up... Well, may- I, Maybe, no, actually. <laughs> I, I was thinking Hobie at first, but I you might be right, because I didn't even think about that, but... Because they were doing fine, and then when Wilty was gone, he started struggling, and yep. then... When, yeah, so you might be right there, actually. He, he was the businessman. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. what sold it. Yeah. But they were never caught, and I guess well, Theo got caught pretty quickly. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> instantaneously, yeah. basically. And the dude had oh. knowledge about the Finch and was going on him about it, so I don't know. <laughs> What's up with yeah, that? Yeah, how did he get that freaking info? Like, how did he know you were in room 32? Right, like... Is that... Well, I guess... I don't think you can, can well, go and be like, hey, 
Was this kid ever in this room, like, during the explosion? <laughs> I need that. Yeah. I mean, he's rich as fuck, so I'm bribery, maybe. Maybe, I don't I mean, know. it's a it fictional universe. Weird. Yeah. Maybe he had just, like, been to the museum a lot, and he knew the goldfinch was in room 32, and he had a hunch that Theo had it, and so he's just like, you were in room 32! He could be the person oh, that mean- puts all the pieces <laughs> together, that type of you yeah. know, mind or whatever, but... You were, you're thinking, like, if he accuses him and then he agrees? Yeah. Like... Like a bl- he's bluffing like he knows it. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe. Because I think that would make more sense than him just like suddenly knowing. Right. I right. just feel like that he was like a weird character. Like, I guess what was the point of all of that? I don't know. Just to prove that Theo didn't really pull out of it because like he's showing himself as a success and you kind of think he has a happy Lily ever after. And then just to watch it come burning down and immediately it out. and like, OK, so we find out he has a happily ever after. One and a half minutes later, it's shot to shit. Like, that's pretty much how this movie went. Two minutes later (laughs) from there, all is good. Yeah. (laughs) 21 and a half minutes later, it's shot to shit again. (laughs) 23 (laughs) minutes later, we're back to being good and we all live happily ever after. Wait, yeah. How did this movie end? I totally forgot. See see us fucking Mrs. Barber. (laughs) That is not how it ended. Okay. They're Maybe. literally walking, looking at artwork together, like with her arm around him. I mean, it's supposed to imply like end. a motherly thing, but oh, I know. I I just am but I'm with doing my head cannon, <laughs> going with my head cannon that she wanted the D. Yeah. But we haven't even talked about Pippa yet, because Sam called her Peppa Pig the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because her name's Pippa. So it sounded like Peppa. So then she's Peppa Pig. Yeah. Fair enough, I guess. Man. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just saying that's what I call her. No, okay, what did you want to say about her? She had that iPod filled with classical music as well. <gasps> but hers... Made sense. <laughs> yes, because she did classical music. But she had the like OG like iPod that was like, a massive... The big one. Yeah. Yeah. It was a tank <laughs> of, a, of an MP3 player that you could harm someone with. Mm-hmm. The good old days. Yeah. Wait, what? I don't know. I just kind of think that, like, <laughs> was her name Pippa or Peppa? It was Pippa with an I. <laughs> well, I'm still call her Peppa Pig. So, I guess, like, I didn't understand the point of her. Nope. She was literally just supposed to give you a fake out. Yeah, I think so. I feel like this movie had, like, one way that they wanted to go or, like, one way I thought it should have gone. You know what I mean? Like. Right. Kind of like we were saying where it it was going to be like some sort of mystery or like something really cool. And then Mm -hmm. it just like didn't end up going that way because like she is basically a red herring. Like she's there with what's his face, Mm Welty. And then like he stops over when he first finds out to go there and you kind of think like, oh, they're going to become really close friends. But then like they don't. Bye, I'm going to Texas. Yeah, she goes to Texas and then she ends up in London. And like, I don't know. Well, he ends up in Vegas. Yeah. I totally thought they were squatting. Oh, same. Oh, absolutely. Everyone else is foreclosed and stuff. Like, Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. First off, Xandra, such a Vegas type name. Am I right? <laughs> it just sounds like a stripper name. Yeah. <laughs> she works a bartender. She's a bartender, which if I recall correctly, people do say that like on job like interviews. They were bartenders, not strippers. Oh, I wouldn't know, but that sounds... I wouldn't that checks either. Out. I think I've read it on the internet, which means it's true. <laughs> obviously. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. <laughs> the dad, like Luke Wilson, just went up and down on me because I was like, oh, he seems like a decent dad. Oh, no, he's a fucking shithole. Yeah. I really didn't like that they cast Luke Wilson because usually, like, He's I the don't heartwarming know. guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but like, I'm glad that he has range, I guess, because I really hated him in this movie. So, well, it's like Steve Carroll in The Way Way Back. Yeah. Where you're just like, I despise you with all of my being. You are a turd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just is a turd. The whole movie. Yeah. Well, oh. I don't know. Maybe not the whole movie, but. No, like when the sports are happening, the sports ball. The sports ball. Yeah, he's like, oh, we're doing so great. You're my good luck charm. And then he's like, can I get your social security number? Yeah. And you're like, uh, I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> First off, what 13-year-old child knows that? Like, yeah. I didn't know that until I was like 18 and I was starting my so first So you game. actually needed it, yeah. Needed it, exactly. <laughs> so, like, oh, yeah, just get me that real quick. 
Get me, get you what? I don't know. I don't think I knew what that was when I was 13. Yeah, and I feel like especially, like, I got the idea that, like, his mom kind of ran the show with him, and so I feel like even more so he'd be a little bit lost. Like, it wouldn't just be something that he'd, like, know. Especially considering they had to, like, clean everything up, you know? Right. From, like, the apartment and stuff. Oh, I yeah. I just feel like I got the vibe that Theo wouldn't know that information even if he was older. No. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, okay, we're headed to MGM Grand for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. For, so, Tim, I don't know if you've been to Vegas yet? No. Well, MGM Grand, which I think is going away now, <laughs> is okay. They have a cool lion. They looked like MGM Grand people, though. I'm they just did. I'm going to say it. It's not that, like, it's at, like, one of the far ends of the strips, and it's kind of, like, okay. meh compared to the rest of them. So they look like an MGM Grand family. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. getting, I think that one's changing, though. I think it got bought. Maybe. I don't know. I like Vegas. I don't think I could live there. Well, you'd be like Boris. I I'd hate be the like sun. Boris. Yeah. <laughs> I hate sun. I wear. I use umbrella. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I mean, you did say you hated it, so I. He's committing. You have committed to this, yes. Mm-hmm. Then when they're tripping on, a, was it acid at the time? Yeah, it was acid because his dad just committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, like, going to grab the <laughs> glass of wine, and grabs it, walks away. What are you doing? First off, I was shocked that that lady took the wine from him. I know. She didn't look like the type that would. <laughs> Which makes us bad people, because we assumed. Yeah. But. Well, so far, they've been able to get away with murder, basically. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. like, why is this suddenly the lady that pays attention? No, but that's that's fair. But then he's like, I didn't think you could see me. I thought that was hilarious. It was. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and then you get brought back down again because then Xander's a bitch to Theo. Mm-hmm. But she ends up taking care of Boris? Yeah! Did they fuck? Oh, they totally fucked. Because I was yeah. like... This whole movie's about how adults are fucking, like, 18-year-old boys. <laughs> because, like, Boris was clearly infatuated mm-hmm. with her. And then, like, he said she was super nice to him. And I was like... Was that was that a hint? Is that is was that, that a yeah? There? Are you uh okay? Got it. <laughs> but she was also so stupid that like stupid stupid that she when they went to New York to pick up Theo the dog shit all over the floor yeah that's Duh. what they do when they're lo- yeah I'm like the oh that part pissed me off <laughs> yeah that, that made me mad me too I was like what the hell and because the dad's like well he has a water fountain I'm like, <laughs> yeah wait what like, <laughs> and food, and what else you got for me? Like, yeah. Holy Aww. crap. Poor, Poor little yeah, I, little, little pop. That's it's a good thing Theo took him. Yeah. Well, Although, he only took him because Boris said to another <laughs> winning yeah, Boris, Boris thing, take the dog. <laughs> but Boris would have ended up with him because he would have moved in with Zan. Is it, it is Xander. Xandra or Xander? Xandra, I think. Xandra. Yeah, Xander yeah. is more of a dude name. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I thought it was Xandra. I have Xandra written down, so. Yeah, he ends up moving in, so he would have gotten to take care of the dog eventually. Yeah. Eventually, maybe. But, oh my god. Also, they put Theo in the front seat of a taxi. I don't know. I'm not a parent, but that seems if weird. I was. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Let's put you up front, kid. It's just another, like, bad... Bad parenting, sort of. Like, right yeah. off the bat, you kind of tell they're bad parents. It's a red flag. Yeah, because they do that, and then in the airport, he's, like, freaking out at TSA because he has the gold finch, and then, like, he's basically like, just give him just one of those give pills. him one of those. And she's just like, like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah, and then TSA doesn't give a shit? Yeah, that's yeah. I said that, too. I was like, really? <laughs> they're just going to, like, pop these pills right here? They're going to question why they're just giving it to these kids? It's like, I don't know. Yeah. 12, 13, uh, actually, but yeah. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. It just seemed. Tisk, tisk. You guys weren't fans of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know that that TSA worker probably was like, I ain't signing up for this shit or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been my mentality about it, but <laughs> but <laughs> this whole lo- thing this just looks like a pain in the ass. <laughs> we'll just let them through. Kid was about to have an anxiety attack though because he had the picture mm-hmm. going through security. Yeah. Oh man. I don't ever care about that. I, I'm just walking through because no. I don't even bring laptops normally. It's literally I just throw my bag up there. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, don't bring board games. 
kid experience with that. Especially we, not something called like sobriety test that has like a hacky sack. And oh my a god! Jump rope and I forgot we did that. So many times I've gotten stopped for sobriety tests. Yeah, we have a we have a board game like Sam was just saying, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Shit's got to look weird on an X-ray. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like what you got there. You live and you learn. I'm like, ah, it's the board game. And they're like, what? And then they open it up and they're like, yeah. It it's is. the board game. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly where it is. It's at the very bottom. <laughs> Good luck. Because it was a pain in the ass to pack. <laughs> oh, my. What a mess. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> D- Tim, did you get kind of a little bit of excitement when you saw the Amsterdam airport? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. Because Sam did. <laughs> I got excited, and then I remembered that they lost my bags. I mean, I wasn't <laughs> their bag. fault. That was, that was JFK. <laughs> no, I know, but I just, I. It just reminded about you. My yeah. Bags. yeah. <laughs> it was like happy, and oh, we're back to where I realized I didn't have my bags with me. <laughs> great. <laughs> I know. I don't know. You guys, you guys handled that situation with great aplomb, though. <laughs> yeah, we went to H and M and just bought out the store. <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration. No, we bought like what three outfits? <laughs> yeah, oh, that was my. funny. Some utensils to survive. Yeah. Did did we? I thought you bought. Like, what does util- that mean? I like, think you mean utilities. <laughs> yeah, like. Oh uh, yes, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I was use uti- visiting utilities. like plastic picnic forks. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I didn't <laughs> buy those, but I can't confirm. Like maybe I did. <sighs> Good stuff. Oh. Well, I think that the only other thing that I had was back around the barber family. So I think another reason I thought that maybe the mom didn't care about him, or I guess that family in general, was because, like, he basically disappears to Hobie's shop, right? And then, like, he's clearly there for a while, but also still living with them. So, like, they never ask or, like, figure out where he goes, do they? Like, that's just weird. No, yeah, it was I also very got the weird. idea that he was skipping school to go there. Oh, okay. Well, that would make more sense. Yeah. But still, they would know that he's skipping school. I don't know. I Probably. just felt like we were gonna see like an an altercation of them being like, "Where have you been?" Right. And, like they just didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> then he like beat up Tommy for like a split second. And I'm like, "You gonna get in trouble for that?" Nah. Yeah, that was weird too. I don't know. I mean, technically speaking, again, Tommy is the reason why his mother died. No, I agree, but that was just such a weird scene that he just, like, beefcake beats him up, and then, like, we don't hear anything about it ever again. Like, what? 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't get know. it. I don't know. At the beginning of the movie, I wrote down that Theo looks like he was 40 years old. Yeah. yeah. But stress will do that to you. Yeah. Plus, he also had, like, the explosion, drugs. like, gray ash. <laughs> well... Yeah. He didn't have the drugs yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, I know him. <laughs> yeah. Well, clearly he was going down that path already, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And oh, we gotta also go back to the Andy kid again because when Pippa was first getting shipped off to Texas, mm-hmm. he's like, "You can't walk anywhere in Texas," and they have the death penalty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's the only two things he knows. Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of people go with no state tax. When you're an adult and barbecue. Yeah, yeah, you would think he would have said something like... Cowboys. Better. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, they go to this hoity-toity school where Beethoven's people's favorite Apparently. musicians. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Yeah, they fancy. <laughs> Tim, you got anything else? I think I just, like, wrote down randomly, like, what is going on? And then I, yeah! and then I would, like, write down, like, for instance, I wrote down, what is going on snorting scene? And they were, I don't, I just, I, <laughs> like. There were a lot of snorting scenes. Yeah. Oh, I also felt like halfway through, I felt the movie, like, it just seemed like it was ending. Like, when yeah. Morris opens the umbrella and they start walking, I was like, oh, the movie's over. <laughs> I knew it wasn't, yeah. but I was like, is this where, like, they were like, we could end it right here, you know. And it would have the Yeah, same they're, effect. like, wrapping it up. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how i felt about it uh, his english teacher looked like he was just going to die because of his, the students like yeah. answers well if we went like that we wouldn't have shopping malls and i'm like <laughs> so i'm guessing you didn't get the point mm-hmm. yeah um but. my favorite quote of the movie was by andy it's like nice. we're moving to some mining colony on jupiter <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> 
I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty much out there, and Boris's dad was a minor. Oh. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Andy has foresight. He does, but not enough. Mm-hmm. My other notes that I have are, I like that they had Dutch newspapers. Yeah? Yeah. Because I don't know why, like, that's a thing that I have. I like it when they actually use the proper language. Right, yeah. Yeah. When they were, like, yeah. And then I have Dutch vodka is the best vodka. <laughs> okay. Um... They're talking about, ho, I keep trying to say Hody and his Hobi. Yes. Hobi was telling Theo about like, oh, this, this antique is a hundred years old. It's been touched a hundred, hundreds upon yeah. hundreds of times. And I was like, it's like a hundred years of germs right there. Yeah, it licks his yeah. hand. It's like, <laughs> bruh. I'm like, mm, stop molesting the during chair. During these trying times. Yeah. You get it. You're into it. All right. Uh. <laughs> Tim, you got nothing else? I'll get into the cast. Nope, I think that was it for me. All right. Young Theo was played by Oaks Fagley. Now, Sam, I know you're like, where have I seen this kid from? Yeah. Where? He's Pete in Pete's Dragon. Oh! <laughs> yeah, not Elliot, but Pete himself. Okay, that checks out. I have he's no in idea this is, is. Wor- He doesn't look 40 years old. He does not. He looks maybe. even younger because he's a wild child. Yeah. This is where I leave you. Okay. Jason Bateman movie. I don't know. And then Wonderstruck. And he's in Adult Theo. Then he's in Adult Theo. Adult Theo is played by Ansel Elgort. Mm-hmm. Tim, he's ba- he's in Baby Driver. Yes, he is. The, he's in The Fault in Our Stars, which is also a movie he goes to Amsterdam in. Mm-hmm. Which was me laughing about that to Sam because <laughs> that's it just seems kind of random, right? Mm-hmm. He's in, Di- he's in the Divergent series and Carrie. Didn't Carrie. Yeah. Gary. Mrs. Barber is played by Nicole Kidman. Shocked, I say. Shocked. She is in Tim's favorite movie, The Moulin Rouge. You can quote <laughs> it. Yeah, I nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> Big Little Lies. Sam yeah. really liked that show. Mm-hmm. She's in Bombshell. Aquaman. Oh, that's interesting. And Batman that. Forever. Oh, she is. Is she in Poison Ivy? Uh, oh, She's a doctor. Oh, I don't remember. Maybe she is then. Maybe she is, but I thought Uma I Thurman like, was yeah, Poison Ivy. Yeah, I didn't Ivy. think she was Poison Ivy. I don't know, but she's in it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that works. Hobie. Hobie is played by Jeffrey Wright. Uh-huh. He's in movies and shows known as Westworld. Shocked, I He's say. a main character. Well, as main of a character as you can with a split character arc TV show. True. Yeah. He's in The Hungry Games. He's Beatty. Oh, yeah. That's legitimately how I refer to him in almost everything. It's Beatty. <laughs> And then he's in Boardwalk Empire, mm. Game Night, and Shaft. Okay. Larry. Who's Larry, Sam? Larry. Who's Larry? Tim, do you know who Larry was? No. It was the dad. Oh, okay. Luke Wilson. <laughs> he's in Idiocracy. Classic. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a movie about our future. Old school. He's in both the, like, the early 2000s Charlie Angels. Charlie's wow. Angels. And then he's in the Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. Which, that's a good one if you haven't seen it. Zandra apparently is the most popular actress in this movie. Yeah, she's in everything. Sarah Paulson. Yeah. American Horror Story. She's in Glass. Mrs. America, which I think you just started. Mm -hmm. Bird Box, Tim. (laughs) She's in The Post as well. And then Young Boris is played by Finn Wolfhard. He's in Stranger Things. He's in It. He's in It, too. <laughs> he's in The Addams Family. And then he's in the Carmen Sandiago oh. show. Adult Boris is played by... Okay, I'm going to butcher this guy's name, and I apologize. But Anurin Barnard, Bernard? Barnard? It's like Barnard. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> he's in a movie called Radioactive. He's in Dunkirk. Oh. Big one. Oh, that's and a good then movie. Bark Skins. Oh, that's new on Hulu, isn't it? Sure. So if you're a fan of Adult Boris, he's on that show movie thing i think that's the one that has nope i'm not i'm not gonna go there i think it's new on hulu <laughs> adult pippa is played by ashley cummings she's in she sounds familiar right but she's not but she didn't look familiar she's not no s for a two no s for a two okay i was I'm wondering idiot. where you're going with that. <laughs> well it's literally yeah, written n o s for a two and i'm like nurse for oh nurse for a two I hadn't said it out loud yet. 
She's in Mrs. Fisher's Murder Mystery. Ooh. And tomorrow, when the story began, where the when the war began. Nice. We're gonna have to watch Mrs. Fisher's Murder Mystery. Murder. Murder Mystery. The director was John Crowley. He did True Detective. He's like it's a TV show. It's got Marushala Marushala dude. Marushala Marushala. You got it. You know who? Do you know who I'm talking about? No. Yeah. Okay. He's the guy from oh shit Moonlight. I don't know what he's in, but I just like his name. I can't say it. I always, I always. Am he's like, gonna be the new Blade. That dude. Oh, yeah. oh okay. He's a, he the guy directed not him John Crowley the guy that can say his name <laughs> directed Brooklyn Closed Circuit and Boy A. Okay. I don't. I've not heard any of these movies. Heard of Motherless in Brooklyn, but not the same thing. Yeah. The novel was done by Donna Tart. Okay. It won a Pulitzer. Okay. And it was like the like a bestseller, New York Times bestseller, whatever that's called. Like twenty eight weeks. I feel like this was like better as a novel. It was one of the ones I that should have stayed. Think, yeah. A novel. It didn't like the flashbacks might work. They probably worked better in novel form because. You only have 90 minutes. I feel like it would have just hit home better as a novel than than what they were going for in the movie. Well, and one thing is, like, you got to think about a page. Like, in theory with screenwriting, like, it's a page is a minute. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing 90 to 120 pages, it's like a, that's a novella. That's not a full on novel. Yeah, which I think is why a lot of people have complaints when they make books into movies because they miss a lot of the context and a lot of the important stuff. And so I think that maybe, like, that's partially why this one felt so weird because they probably are missing big chunks that, yeah. you know, kind of intertwined it versus what we were saying where it's like, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, like, look at Harry Potter. I think it's The Order of the Phoenix. It was like a thousand, thousand two hundred pages. Mm-hmm. Drop that down to, like, 230 pages and it gets confusing yeah didn't they like cut 230 pages ha <laughs> more like 150 didn't they cut the big battle scene that was in that the sixth one, one but just another instance of yeah chucking shit out now tim the tagline is not what you was not <laughs> it's happening oh. it was in fact the story of a stolen life that which yeah it does and then this by the way is the first collaboration that Amazon Studios did with Warner Brothers. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. I gotta say, before we even say if we're gonna flip it on or off, I want to state that they made it seem like he was a good person at the end. And I think that bothered me. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that bothered me, too. Because he, like, they're talking about, like, oh, the whole world can see all this art now. Right, but, you know, only gangsters got to see the art for, like, he and some gangsters got to see it for, like, 15 years Mm -hmm. you caged a bird yeah i mean the book is about like it's a metaphor the whole right story is but Mm -hmm. glad i met you before (laughs) 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 no i agree i think that like there were a lot of parts in this movie that were awkward like that where they tried to turn it around and make you feel better about like the situation or the characters Mm -hmm. involved and like I don't know. That just left a bad taste in my mouth because I was like, this is some bullshit, man. Bullshit. Derivative. Derivative. We do that on every episode. (laughs) We didn't sing in this one, but we got the bullshit derivative in. We've pivoted from singing to bullshit derivative. (laughs) At least for a bit. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, Sam, as you're the picker of the fifth box office bust, would you flip it on? No, and I'm kind of salty that I picked this as a box office bust. I wanted a big bust, but I didn't want it to be like this. I think I've made my feelings very clear, but I'm just going to (laughs) reiterate that you're meant to feel bad for the kid. And like to a certain extent, you kind of feel like a shithead if you don't. But then at the same time, by the end of the movie, you're not feeling bad for the kid. You're like, really? Really? So definitely do not flip it on for me. I'll say that if they had done like a kind of one of those like butterfly effect endings Mm -hmm. where like he dies, but like he kind of has like a vision of how like his life could have been if he didn't, his mom didn't die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like he still met Hobie and well, well, Welty would be gone still, but like he didn't have to cheat his way like, like into being good at like the finances part of it all. And like he kind of had that like vision at the end. I'm not saying the whole movie was a dream sequence. I'm saying 
as he's passing away from drug overdose, he has he, like, a dream sequence. His decisions. Sort yes. Of thing. Yeah. yeah. And like then I would be like, yes, flip it on. But that did not happen, so I'm gonna say flip it off. Box office bust for me. Tim. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> I'm gonna say flip it on. Woo! Spicy. Because I think while well, it didn't hit for us, I think there's something there that people can relate to, and like it is a movie about lost and like rebuilding yourself in a sense, or just like hanging on to something and letting go, like finally. Mm-hmm. And maybe moving past, you know, problems in his life or whatever. So I'm gonna say, you know, for some people it might it might have some kind of relation where it's like I didn't feel that and I was kind of lost the whole time. But usually I'm into these type of movies just because they, they you know, they're good. Whereas this was like a bad version of one of those movies. So I'm just gonna yeah, say I've... flip it on because I'd like to know if other people agree like this type of movie. It was just bad, but it was in that genre, or if it's just a bad movie in general. But I say flip yeah, it. I felt like it kind of went meh at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, not at the end. I was like a little bit above meh, but in the end, the ending is what made me be like, no. Yeah. yeah. But if you like pictures of birds, you can flip it on. <laughs> and if you like artwork, you can flip it on. Yeah. And if you like weirdly knowledgeable kids that know way too much about culture, <laughs> flip it on. If you don't like the sun, flip it on. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you like weird russian attempts at a russian accent flip it yeah. on but if you like actual ones wait till about 50 percent of the way into it mm-hmm. if you like antiques flip it on oh yeah There's a lot of a side antique situation that i thought was cool yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. we're gonna f- spin this bad boy do it, spin it! <laughs> tim is up to I bat up. let us see what he got got he's gonna get something good today guys got got Back at it again. Oh, wait. No, that's a new category, but Tim got streaming original. <laughs> streaming original. Okay. That is our final streaming original, so we're going to get rid of it, too. We're about. R.I.P. I know. <laughs> we do have new categories coming to our spinner, which is pretty exciting. Sam is just like, I don't want any of these ones that I've had before. <laughs> I only want fresh stuff. No, I just, I I don't want to celebrate too early because it could be like five months from now when we finally get them. Right. So, well, we'll I see. mean, two of the ones that we've had, 10 of our episodes have been two categories. That is true. So that is true. that's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, wait, no, we still got one other streaming original. I lied. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but at least we know that streaming original is getting old. It's getting up there. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us here. The Flipper Flixers. All right. Yeet! <laughs>